Eli Roth, what, why? I don't know how to start this review. I really don't. It's, let me just. Uh. Well, I guess I can start by saying that I started, I went into this movie pissed off. All right. So I was, I finished watching the first one, the review, you know, I was watching some reviews on it afterwards. I watched uh, Jason from Sinister Cinema, his review. Uh, and in that, in his review, he spoiled that Paxton dies right away in, in the second one. I went, what? I didn't know that. I didn't know he was going to spoil things about the sequels. It's fine. It's my fault. I didn't know. But, uh... <clears throat> yeah, so I was already pissed because I kind of wanted to, this movie to be about Paxton getting his revenge on them. And it's not that. In fact, you remember how I said that I called Eli yeah, Roth a low-rent Rob Zombie? Well, the beginning of this movie is very Halloween, too, in a way. Because we start off with Paxton passed out on the bus, the train that he took, and then he wakes up in a hospital. He's telling these people what happened, and they reveal themselves to be a part of the group, and then kill him. Then he wakes up in bed with his girlfriend, and I'm going, wait a minute. Did he have that girlfriend when he went to um, Europe with the others? Because if so, he cheated on her. And as I said that, she says, I took you back because I was sorry for you. I'm like, oh, okay, so they were broke up, and they got back together. Okay. And he's like, He's worried that they're going to find him and everything. And I'm like, okay, so he died, but it was a dream. So he doesn't die or was Jason talking about the dream? What? Well, no. Because he's like, I got to go down and get something to eat. I got to, you know, medication and you got to eat food with. She's like, no, I'm going to bed. So he goes downstairs and she wakes up to a chainsaw going off. And uh, she sees like a neighbor or something or a landscapist doing that. And then she goes downstairs and Paxton has been decapitated at the table. His head's gone and we see it later in a shot later. But uh, yeah, he's dead. He's dead. He's dead. So Paxton's dead. We move on to our main characters, who are three women in this one. Uh, Whitney, Beth, and Lorna. Lorna is played by Heather Matarazzo. You may know from the Princess Diary movies. And she was in Scream 3 and the newest one. So, uh, <clears throat> yeah. And we get to see her topless. We get to see her naked, in a way. Speaking of naked... I find this very weird. You know how in the, in the last one, the first one, there was a lot of tits everywhere. There's not as much here. There's one very gratuitous scene that they'll get to, but here, these three women, they're they're in an art class in Rome, and they're drawing or painting a nude male model, and this guy's just sitting there, just hanging dong on a pedestal, right? Hanging dong, full frontal, right there. Hello, nice to see you. You know what I'm, you know what I'm saying? Just, hello there, it's right there, you know. And then he goes away, he gets down, he puts his robe back on, and a woman gets up. And this is the woman, Axel, that is sort of the, uh, like the guy from the, the apartment guy that, uh, they talk to her in the first one because she's in on it. But she gets up there and she, she goes with this robe and then she disrobes. Just before it opens, it cuts back to our main characters. And we don't see her naked. I'm going, wait. Eli Roth shows us a full frontal dude. And a full frontal... and But not a full frontal woman. 
And his dialogue in both these movies, the characters say gay multiple times. Are you hiding something, Eli Roth? Hmm? 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 You're trying to speak to me, I know it. <clears throat> but anyway. Yeah. So they're going to Prague, but then they change and they go to Slovakia. Because... Uh... We see that Heather Matarazzo's character, Lorna, she's listening to her music while the other two go and party. Because it's Eli Roth movie, you can have a party. And while they're there, uh, she gets attacked and her iPod gets stolen. But then, magically, Axel has found the guy and apparently he tried to steal something from her, apparently, and she took it. Obviously, the guy was hired by her as a way to get in with them. Which, as soon as that happened, I'm like, no, nah, she's in on it. And they're trying to mess with you. Because there's a guy that offers them drinks. And he's like, she's like, they're like, no, no, no. And, and they go to this party in, in Slovakia. There's another guy who's like, uh, I will give you something to drink. And they're like, do you want to come dance with me? And he's like, she's like, no. He's like, I could have saved you. Is he supposed to be helping? But then later... Beth finds him when she's running, and he's like, I offered you help, and you didn't take it. Now it's too late. And he drives off. I'm like, no, no, you still could have saved her. I know he got beaten up. Oh, by the way, if there, I, I mentioned in my review for the first film that I was pretty sure that the guy at the desk, whose name is Jedi for some reason, uh, wasn't in on it. I feel like he was just the day guy, and the night chick was in on it. Well, they leave no uh, no doubt that he's in on it here. First of all, the fact that this, the same guy shows up again and he's like, hey, come to a party, we'll have sexy dance. And then he shows up after the guy, hey, was he bothering you? No, no, it's fine. Don't worry. He'll never bother you again. I'm like, okay, so he's in on it. <clears throat> and the next day we see the guy's beaten up. They didn't kill him, but they beat him up. And then he won't help them. I still would have helped her. I'm just saying. And so, like, the way they get Lorna is that this guy named Roman offers to take him for a ride on her boat. Take her for a ride on his boat. You know what? She deserves to die for just taking out with some guy. And we don't know. Why? Even after her friend says not to do it, she does it. Why? Because it's Eli Roth's shitty fucking writing. That's why. Your friends are legitimately looking out at you, but if, if she doesn't do this, then we can't have our movies, so she has to do it. <clears throat> and, yes, he gets taken and grabbed by these guys, and she wakes up upside down and naked, so we get our nude Heather Matarazzo scene. I think it's her. It could be a, like a double, so I don't know. She's gagged for most of it until towards the end, but this woman comes in, she disrobes, she gets in this tub thing they have, and it's candles all around it. She starts, she's like a scythe, and she just starts nicking at her, causing blood to drip down on the top of this naked woman, where she rubs herself all in the blood, and she's even moaning like she's getting off on it, and then she slits her throat, and it's like, okay, this is just, like, some of the stuff in the first one, like, snipping the tendons and Stuff like that was brutal, but this was, this is downright, I don't know what. That's why I, I was sitting here going, okay, what? What is this? I, I don't know. I, I, I really, I don't know. I don't know. We ain't done here, folks. So, during this, the other two, so there's this guy that was hooked up with Whitney. His name is... Uh, Miroslav, he is Crumb, Victor Crumb from Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. And you also are supposed to think he's in on it because he tries to get Whitney to go to bed with him. And so you're supposed to think he's in on it. But this is after, you know, after we just seen Lorna get taken out by Roman and his uh, accomplices. 
So we know it's possible. I thought she still thought he was in on it. But then later he's being been tied up and being eaten by this old dude. Yeah, alive, eaten alive. Uh well, one thing they do different in this is we actually follow a couple of the killers. We got Todd and uh Stuart. Stuart is kind of doesn't have money. So uh Todd had to pay for him to uh to join and they have to get tattoos and throughout the whole movie you, you get the sense that Stuart really doesn't want to do this. Todd is forcing him to do it. He doesn't feel comfortable with any of this, but they turn it on its head real quick once it gets to the towards the end of the movie because we the end of the movie and we gotta do stuff. But uh so they're all at the little spa thing and uh Beth falls asleep and she wakes up and there's no one there. And people are trying to grab her and she runs. By the way, the kids from the last one are still here. Tala! They're, they're still here. Uh, in this one. This was filmed a year later, so they didn't really age. So, But, uh, yeah. And so she runs into the woods. And you see the kids try to attack her. But then... Uh, Axel and this guy Sasha, who we saw earlier, so we know he's in on it. So at this point, you're like, you know, she's in that Attel is in on it, or Axel is in on it, because you've seen this guy earlier because they presented Paxton's head to him. So you know he's in on it, or the leader of this thing, whatever. <clears throat> it's a stream hunter, or whatever it's called. So, <clears throat> um, take her back to Sasha's mansion. And they don't drug her because that'd be too easy. So we'll come and take her. And yeah, she's been paid for by. They did something earlier too where they. Because you're now in the know and you know what's going on, they show you behind the scenes with the killers and stuff. And I guess that's that's a little something different. You know, they kind of show you what's going, what's going on on that side now, the bidding and everything, which is also how you know. That the guy at the desk isn't on it because he's not the pictures, but anyway, um, so, anyways, uh, she is now going to be killed by Stuart, and Todd is busy killing Whitney, but he fucks up and only scalps her. She's still alive. He then backs out, says, I can't do this, I can't do this. He's the one that's been talking to something. He's ready, ready, ready to go, and he's all, you know, he's the one that backs out. So they're playing with, they're messing with your expectations, because you're thinking Stuart's going to be the one to back out, Todd's going to be the one to go full tilt. Because he fails to do this, and he refuses to, to do it now. You can't leave without killing, so they kill him. And uh, Stuart takes the, uh, the chance to kill Whitney. So he does. Off screen, by the way. This one's a little more brutal, but still. Then he goes back to Beth, and he explains why he chose her. He looks like his wife. She looks like his wife. Excuse me. She looks like his wife. Yeah. And he, first he acts like he's going to let her go, and then knocks her over the head. And apparently he's psychotic. So he shows her the picture of her friend, and then says, I'm going to go kill her. He does. And then he comes back, and she seduces him. So he unties her, lays her down, and tries to rape her, but she kicks him because he's got his pants on button that leads into something. <clears throat> uh, she tries to escape. He tells her a code, but it only sounds the alarm because <clears throat> you can't leave until you killed someone. So, and they show up, and he's she's got his balls by with some scissors, and they're like. Uh, they explained earlier that she is made of money. She's like, I got more money than anything. I got Swiss bank accounts. I got this, that, this, that. I can, you know, they even mentioned that she could buy Slovakia if she wanted. She could, so she's got money. And they're like, it's not about money. You cannot leave without killing. So she castrates the guy. She cuts off his dick and balls. And no. No, Ilara. Bad. 
Bet Eli Roth. Bet. No. No. Don't want to see that. And she's just like, let him bleed to death. I'm like, well, technically you didn't kill him. They let her go. They put a tattoo on her back. So now she's a part of the group. We we're supposed to cheer this, apparently. And then she kills XL with the help of the kids. They trap her, they knock her down, and she decapitates her. Decapitation! And that's the end of the movie. Eh. The first one was okay. It was the middle of the road at best. This one, I don't know what to think. They doubled down on the weirdness and the grossness and the, it just doesn't doesn't work for me at all. I don't think I'm this this franchise is for me. Uh this one is not worth your time. I just watch the first one if you must. That's the only one so far. Although there is some good news, maybe. The third one was not directed by Eli Roth, but by Scott Spiegel, who's a good friend of uh one uh Hey, I, Ramey, Sam Ramey, sorry, I couldn't get the name. <clears throat> so we'll see, but I have doubts that I'll like that one any better than these, but who knows? Apparently Eli Roth had nothing to do with that, so like, maybe the dialogue might be better. Who knows? Uh, but we'll see. Uh, so yeah. This one's not worth your time. So, uh, what are your thoughts on Hostel Part 2? Let me know in the comments below. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'm Scotty, and I'll see you in the next one.